The next topic is just mind-boggling and insane and ridiculous, and I don't, I, I don't know exactly what to do about it. But I came across this um, from Paul McKeever, who's a, a, an objectivist in Canada, and on his Facebook page on this article, um, and the article says, and the, the title of the article, and first, when I read it first, I thought, no, this is like fake news. This is, this is some like onion piece. This is uh, some ridiculous thing. And it, and it is true that the, the title is a bit more uh, crazy than the actual content, but it's still insane. The actual content is still insane. Uh, but I thought this was so nuts that it couldn't be true. So I did a bit of a Google search, and it's like this appeared in every newspaper in Canada, and then it appeared in all the British newspapers. So I figure, and then, and then if, you, if you go in, and you can find the actual documents from the school district. So uh, this is actually true. And this is the title. Now, the title is a little there to provoke, but that's what titles are there for. And this is what the title says. Eight-year-old pupils to be told boys can have periods too under new sex education lessons guidelines. Yeah, you heard that right. The new education guidelines, the new sex education guidelines, in order not to discriminate between boys and girls, are telling in the class, it, it, they are being told, that boys can have periods too. Now, for a while there, I thought, no, okay, this is completely nuts. What, what are they talking about? Boys can have periods. I mean, boys can have periods. I mean, that's just... And, and it took me a while because it's so convoluted and so weird what they're actually saying. It took me a while to figure out what they actually mean, because they talk about transgenders and, all right, but what does that have to do with boys? Boys can't have periods. Boys, you know, if, if you have a penis, you don't have a period. That's about it. You need, you need certain infrastructure, biological infrastructure to have a period. And I think what they mean, and, uh, you know, ultimately what I got from this is, and they won't say it exactly, because... They can't be too explicit. They can't actually say what they mean. Uh, you know, being vague and being misleading is, is part of how they get away with this crap. What they mean is that a girl who identifies herself as a boy who might be in the boy's locker room could have a period. Now, that is true. Biologically, I, I originally thought they were just, you know, uh, even denying biology. But as I read, I realized that no, what they're doing is they're not denying that aspect of biology. They might be denying other aspects of biology. They're not denying that. They're just recognizing the fact that if, big if, if you accept that a, um, a pre- puberty, pupubescent child who is a girl can identify as a boy and a pupubescent boy who can identify as a girl and that that is legitimate, that that is legit and that they should be treated that way, then you it recognize the fact that you've got a real problem because girls who identify as boys are going to have periods and the boys around them I'm not going to know what to do because, hey, I, I, at age 12, I don't think I knew exactly. I didn't know what a period was. I had no idea. Um, so this girl who identifies a boy is not surrounded by girls who might be able to help them understand what it is. They're now surrounded by boys who have no clue and who are probably shocked by the whole thing and probably, therefore, are going to behave in, in not-so-nice ways towards this girl who's identified as a boy who's not bleeding and having uh, menstruation. So, so now what they're doing is they're teaching this to eight-year-olds that boys can have periods too. Ah! I mean, the insanity of it. No. Boys, by definition, do not menstruate. One of the things that makes a woman a woman biologically is that she menstruates, that she has a period. One of the things that trans, the men who identify as women will never experience, and that's why they can never be fully female. 
is having a period. Now, I've never had one, so I don't know the full experience, but, you know, living around a woman, I can tell you, it's an experience. It's time-consuming, energy-consuming, hormone-consuming, hormone-influencing. It's an experience, one way or the other. Negative, positive, it's an experience that only women can have. Only biological women can have. And it doesn't matter what you identify yourself with. Now you can have all that mechanism taken out and have something rebuilt down there that, and then you can pretend to be a man. I think that's a lot easier than the other way around. But as long as you have that biology, that's what you are. And I'm not denying here, I'm not denying here, that certain people who are born women, even in adulthood, feel like they should be a man. Feelings are not primary, one. Two, even if there's some biological basis to that, hormones, something else, something going on in the brain, it doesn't make them a man. It makes them feel like they want to be a man. It makes them feel like a man, but it doesn't make them a man. And the same with the other way around. And I feel sorry for them. I think it's horrible, 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 whether it's biological, psychological, whatever the cause is. To be of one gender, feel like you should be of another gender. I can't imagine it because, because it, sex is so important. And clearly knowing who you are and clearly knowing wh who you're attracted to is so important. It's so important um, that it's sad. If, if you can't do that, if you don't know how to identify yourself, if you don't feel a complete man or a complete woman, if you're, if you're torn or if, or if you've got a body of one and you think you should be something else, I mean, all of those are real psychological issues and real problems, and I feel sorry for those people. It's really, really problematic. And they shouldn't be made fun of, and they should be ridiculed, and suddenly they have a right to live their life with dignity, and they have a right, all the rights that any, any other individual has. But... They don't have more rights than that. And it's not, you can't just ignore biological reality. And there is a certain biological reality. Now, I do know a man who turned himself into a woman, uh, a famous economist. I, I actually mentioned him, uh, mentioned her on the show um, a while ago. And I've spent some time with uh, her now, uh, she transitioned to being a uh, female, and she's quite old, and she's delightful and and funny and amazing, and you know we disagree very fundamentally on lots of issues. Philosophically, we're not aligned, although we're aligned up to a point, more aligned than a lot of intellectuals are, and she's more um, open to our ideas than many intellectuals are, but she's religious and she's lots of other things that are, that, and she's wrong about a lot of things, but she's a delight to be with, and I consider her a she because she's changed the biology in enough ways, and that's what she wants to be called, and that's what she dresses as, and that's what she behaves as, that she's a she, right, who was a he, and, and she She's funny about it. She talks about it. She's, she's, she's got a sense of humor about it. So, uh, and, and I think it's cost her a lot to make that transition. It's not a simple thing to have done. But, okay, as an adult, you have a lot of ways in which you can deal with these things. But let me say this again. As long as your biology is what it is, that's what you are. Children should not have a choice. Children should not have a choice. Children should not be making these kind of decisions. It is absurd and ridiculous to expect children eight years old to understand sexuality, anything about sexuality, anything about gender other than their boys and their girls. And a boy who feels like a girl and a girl who feels like a boy at, eight, at eighth grade or eight years old or eight, eight year olds is absurd. It's ridiculous. It's bizarre. Maybe as teenagers, late teens. It's nuts. And to, and to cultivate this and to embrace this and to make it part of the curriculum, for God's sake, 
is absolutely absurd. Yes, there are plenty of little girls who are tomboys and who want to be boys. Lots of them. Lots of them, particularly given the way girls are treated and the way boys are often treated. A lot of girls would like to be boys because they can be like to be treated like boys because boys are generally treated better, in some way at least. And it, it's a travesty. Travesty to appease that. And, and it's not surprised that what you get is a generation of emotional spewing young adults who are told that anything they feel at any point in their life is okay. Children are not developed enough cognitively, biologically, sexually to have an opinion about these things. They can tell mommy, I feel this way, fine. And if it sustains itself, maybe you should, you know, as a parent, you should consider it and think about it. And I don't know, I, I don't know enough about the condition. But to take it seriously enough to give them hormones or to, or to, or to, or to let, them, let a girl be in a boy's locker room or a boy be in a girl's locker room because they identify at the age of eight with some other sex is absurd and ridiculous. Unfair to the child, never mind to all the other children. And it, it enshrines subjectivism. So I don't think we have a good... Um, biological, scientific grasp on what's going on with transgenderism. But I certainly don't think that we should embrace this idea that uh, we should teach eight-year-olds and we should teach children that there are no differences between genders and, um, you know, menstruation is inclusive. The teacher, the advisor says, menstruation must be inclusive of all genders. No! Only those with the biology of a woman, of a girl, can menst menstruate. Boys cannot menstruate. They cannot. It's one of the things that makes a girl a girl. Um, the new advice following a council report which says, trans boys are men and non-binary people, how can you be non-binary as a child? May have periods. No, they can't. Men can't have periods. Menstruations must be inclusive of all genders. Bins, listen to this. Bins used for menstruation products will be provided in all toilets for children, according to the report. Ah. Um, unbelievable, just unbelievable. Um, the, the, what the, the subjectivism that we, that we have come to in, in, in the world in which we live in the world in which we live. Uh, this is what the council says in a statement. By encouraging effective education on menstruation and puberty, we hope to reduce stigma and ensure no child or young person feels shame in asking for period products inside or outside of school if they need them. Well, that's all fine. Although, again, I don't think eight-year-olds need to learn, uh, have sex education classes. I'm not sure what they're thinking. You know, maybe girls are starting to menstruate at eight. I, I don't know. Uh, but this is primarily something the parents should be deal dealing with, not the schools. Not every parent wants their kids taught, told the, 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 the actual details of menstruation, of sex, and everything else. And of course, as, as Doron mentions, generally trans children are, are very, very, very rare. Very rare. Okay. As one of the critics says, uh, critics of this policy says, learning about periods is already a difficult subject for children of that age, of any age really. So to throw in the idea, girls who believe that they are boys also have periods will leave them completely confused. Absolutely. However, the article says, leading doctors have previously recommended that primary school children are taught about LGBT issues. No, no, no. I mean, that's just absurd that young children should be taught about these issues. Now, you know, the only reason I can think of is in the culture in which we live in, these issues rise to the surface 
and kids are exposed to them at a very young age. And, and, but it'd be good then if they just got objective information and objective knowledge about it instead of the kind of subjectivism um, that, that is perpetrated by, I think, this recommendation and other recommendations like it. All right.